Hey folks, I'm R.J. Byrne with the University of Georgia Thomas County Extension Office, and today I got Dr. Bob Kimmerite with us. Dr. Bob is our peanut pathologist, and today we're going to talk about tomato spotted wilt virus in peanuts. Dr. Kimmerite? Good morning. For about the past, probably close to 15 to 20 years, tomato spotted wilt virus has been the number one disease we've got as peanut producers in the southeastern United States, and especially in southwestern Georgia. And if you look down below, we've got some spotted wilt here with us today. This, uh, you can see the stunting of the plants. You can see the chlorosis of the leaves. You can see the interesting vein pattern and the spotting on the leaves. Basically what spotted wilt does in a bad situation like this is that it gives you the stunting, it affects the quality of the nuts themselves, and severely affects yield. In a bad situation, tomato spotted wilt virus can take most of a yield away from a grower. And we've had that many times over the past 20 years, 15 to 20 years. But what I will say is this year has not been that way. Tomato spotted wilt virus, for some reason, and we're not exactly sure, but we believe it may be tied to this extremely cold winter we had, spotted wilt has been very low. Okay. We've also got some excellent new varieties. We've got the spotted wilt risk index would help us manage it. So in 2010, spotted wilt, which for the past 15 to 20 years has been the number one disease in most of those years, this year is actually fairly minor. And if you look at this entire field that we're standing in now, for the most part there's very little spotted wilt. We had to hunt for this spot where it's so bad. Okay. So the good news for growers is tomato spotted wilt virus can be managed. In some years it's not as bad as in other years. The way you manage it is by using the peanut prescription or peanut RX. You look at your production factors, take measures to reduce your risk by finding more resistant varieties, watching your planting date, watching your seed population, factors like that. If it does become a problem, if you don't manage spotted wolf well, if you use a susceptible variety, if it's a bad year for it, there's no way to recover once that crop has come up. So the important thing for growers in southwest Georgia and other places, make sure that when you manage tomato spotted wolf virus, don't forget it can be a problem, and make your management decisions before you plant your seed, even before you buy your seed, so you know that this won't be a problem. And hopefully 2011 will be as good as year as this is, if not better. And Dr. Kimright, if we have a problem with spotted wilt, and we do our index, and we still have it show up in our crop, what kind of negative impact as far as like how many pounds could we expect to lose if we get a severe infestation of spotted wilt? Well, hopefully, first RJ, is if they do use the right varieties and they do use the index, hopefully they won't have a severe case. It could happen, but hopefully it won't because you're taking the steps. But if you do have a severe case, I would say it's not unlikely in a severe case, some of the ones we've seen where we have 90% infection in a field or more, you could have as much as a couple thousand pounds lost, even more than that in a severe case. In minor cases or moderate cases, it won't be that. It might be at 500 to 1,000 pounds. But in severe cases, you can basically lose the field to tomato spotted wolf virus. Super. Well, thanks, Dr. Kimmerite. And again, if you want to find that peanut RX tool to help you rate your index, you can visit our website on the address below. Thanks.